welcome to the first ever Miss Strawberry Makes podcast. Um, though this isn't the first one I filmed, I filmed one the other day and uh, there were just some things that went wrong with it. So, uh, like, I was too far away, so it was too quiet. Hopefully you can hear me now. Um, and I had trouble uploading it and it just worked out all for the best anyway because I decided I'd rather just try again from the beginning. So, um, yeah, like I said, I'm Michelle, um, and I am Miss Strawberry Short Girl on Instagram. Um, I'm on Instagram the most of all social media, so if you want to find me, find me there. Uh, I also have a blog called the Strawberry Cottage Journal, where I blog about all my crafty shenanigans, though I don't update it as much as I should. I'll put the link to that in the show notes on my blog, although you'd have to know where my blog is to get to that, so I'll put it in the um, bottom of this video. I'm also on Ravelry as Miss Michelle Bell. You can find me on there. I don't use that as often as I should either, but I'd like to do more, so. Okay. Um, so I sew, I knit, and I crochet. I love all the crafty granny crafts, I guess, um, and I love vintage stuff. Most of my makes are vintage inspired, if not all of them. Um, uh, I'm kind of new to even watching podcasts. I've just started watching them. Um, Constance of Yearning Over the Days, she's Cleo CMC on Instagram and Ravelry. And I always want to call her Cleo because I just think of her as that, but Constance is her name. Um, she has a really great um, podcast I've really been enjoying. So, and then also Cherry Heart. Everyone knows about Cherry Heart, I'm sure. Her podcast is so fun to watch. And then through Cherry Heart, I found Little Bobbins. Really enjoying hers, too. She just seems like a really sweet gal, um, and has such fun makes. Um, and so, yeah, thought I'd have a try at a podcast, thought it seemed like fun, kind of like, um, show and tell at school when we were kids. So, um, I hope it won't seem like I'm copying any of them, but to me it seemed like they all follow basically the same schedule of, um, maybe the order might vary, but finished objects, works in progress, um, ideas, plans, things you found, stash-wise, um, and also, um, things you've made previously. So, I thought I would start with how I learned to sew, knit, and crochet, because, um, little Bob, Danny of Little Bobbins started with how she learned to knit, and I was like, oh, that's a fun place to start. So I thought I'll go ahead and do that. I learned to sew first. Um, I was really just a little girl when I learned to sew. My mom sewed a lot of me and my three sisters' clothes when we were kids, and so she taught me the basics of sewing, and then I learned um, just from doing patterns. I think the first thing I ever made was an apron, no pattern, just mom showed me, just cut out a waistband that extends into straps or ties and just a length of fabric for the apron, part of the apron, and zip, zip. it was so cool just how you could take a flat piece of fabric, make a few cuts, sew it, and it was a three-dimensional object that just, I mean, it still actually kind of amazes me when a pattern comes together. So, sewing for a long time. Um, knitting. My Mima taught me. It's my dad's mom. Um, she is from Germany. She came to America when she was 17 in the 50s. Um, so I knit continental style because she taught me how, and that's how she does. I really enjoy that. I feel like it's um, really quick. Just... And once you get your tension right, it's good to go. Like when she first showed me, I would pull after every stitch, I'd pull it really tight because I thought, oh, that's probably how you get really good tension. But 
obviously that's not how you do it. So I'd have to take it to her and she would loosen it up for me by doing a row or two. And actually she ended up finishing that scarf. That was the first thing that she showed me to make just a garter stitch scarf. No idea at the time what garter stitch even meant, of course. Um, but so, and I kind of got it at first, but I struggled and I put it away for a little while and then I came back to it and I got out a book she had given me, a learn to knit book. It's a fun book. It's from the sixties. It's got some cute little patterns, but, um, and then looking at the diagram or not diagrams, but yeah, maybe diagrams, but the illustrations, um, it just clicked. I was like, oh, that's how it works. That's why it's like that. So then I learned purl from that little book because I knew knit. So then the rest is history. It just clicked after that. That's kind of how I learn. I have to try it and not get it, put it down, come back to it later. And it's like it grew until I understood it in my mind. Somehow it just clicks then to finally grasp it. So, um, yeah, I think I was 15 or 16 when she taught me to knit and then I kind of fiddled around with it for a few years. And then my oldest nephew was born when I was 18 or 19. And when I found out my sister was expecting him, I was like, I have to knit a baby sweater. So, um, before we knew he was a boy, I made a girl sweater. That's okay. It was a cute sweater. And it ended up going to my cousin's baby girl, who was born just like a few months before Wes, my oldest nephew. So found out he was going to be a boy, had the little girl sweater done, made him a little blue, little man sweater. So that, and then that's probably some of my favorite things to make are baby knits, things for my nieces and nephews, though they're not really babies anymore. The youngest of the six of them is now two. So he's still a baby though. That's a good thing. Um, yeah. So, oh, and then crochet. I just learned that a couple years ago. Mima taught me and then my friend Gus showed me some too. And then I was like, Put it down for a while like i don't get this and got out a book that my grandma my mom's mom gave me because she crochets too um and uh, voila it clicked just like it did with knitting so and i have been uh, crocheting like crazy i actually probably like crocheting I, mean, I don't necessarily like it better but i do more of it now maybe just because it's the newest it's novel to me right now so i do a lot of crocheting although all the no, wait, no, never mind. Cut that. Okay. So that's how I learn. And I'm so happy I did. It's one of my favorite things to do and what I spend most of my money on. Yarn and fabric. So, okay, today I am not going to do any finished objects. I thought for my first one, since I haven't shown you anything I'm working on, yet obviously since it's the first one i would just won't do finished objects um except i will talk about what i'm wearing because i did make this so this is my oldie but a goodie for today it is my kath kidston duck cloth 60s shift dress um i used vintage simplicity 7300 um i'm sure i got this at my favorite thrift store Probably paid a quarter for it because that's how much they are there. Exciting. Um, this is from 1967 and I made you, well, I guess kind of view four but without the pockets. I love how quick and easy this is to make. Um, just a few pieces and it's done. I love it. Um, let me show you it. See if you can see if you can see it. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Hopefully you can see that. Um, they'll be back in line again too. But yeah, I love, love this. I've made another one of this pattern out of some flannel that you can see on my Instagram if you get on there. Um, yeah, and it's a bus, London bus print fabric because I'm an Anglophile. I love English stuff, Brit all British, you know, Scottish, all that. Um, yeah, I don't think I have much more to say about this, except that since it's duck cloth, it is kind of a stiff fabric, and it the high neckline kind of bugs me sometimes. But, um, not bad enough not to wear it, although I may try to trim it down some somehow but we'll see how that goes usually once a project is done i don't want to have to do anything else to it i'm just moving on to other things so speaking of moving on let's move on to my works in progress okay let me get a sip of tea here throat's kind of scratchy today hopefully it's just allergies um Okay, let's start with my Calf Kids Thing Cardi, which happens to be in my Calf Kids backpack. Sensing a theme here. Obsessed much? Okay, this is my Granny Stripe cardigan in Calf Kids Thing colors. It really, it really should be a finished object by now. It has been in this state for at least a week, maybe, maybe nearing two weeks. It's just the ends, look at all those ends. I hate weaving in ends. I know I'm not alone. Anyone who says they like weaving in ends is probably just trying to be different. Seriously. But, oh my goodness, I need to do it because I love this. I cannot wait to wear this. Okay, the pattern is a good vintage Granny Stripe Cardi by Fran Morgan. I got the pattern off Ravelry. It was originally in Simply Crochet Magazine. I'm not sure what issue because sadly I didn't get the issue even though I love magazines. They're wonderful. But I'll just be happy with the pattern for now. Um, yeah. So far it's been really easy to follow, except that it is in UK terms, not US terms. Obviously you can tell by my voice that I am American. Um, but, I mean simple follow. I know how to make granny squares, so I know that they take U.S. doubles where it says trebles in here, so I just know. They don't mean what they say. Well, they do if you're English or British. Um, okay, the yarn I used is Knit Picks Palette. It is a very nice fingering weight, and it, um, it's 100% wool Peruvian, I think, yeah. 100% Peruvian Highland wool. That's one of the thingies. I don't know if that'll show up. Um, okay, I used, well, I want to say it's not the softest wool that there ever was. It's not like merino or anything, but for the price, it's wonderful. Um, probably the best price fingering wool you're going to find. And that's at nitpicks.com. Um, the colors I use for the main color is silver. Okay, um, let's start here. This mustardy color is turmeric, sky blue, tomato, blush, pistachio, custard, rosehip, and wonderland heather if I remember correctly. this I had all this in my stash. Uh, I like to stock up on the palette whenever they have a sale, 
and they run sales. Mapex is really good about sales, so I really like that. Um, I think the only thing I can say about that is that there was a way you could count to see which color to start with so that your colors would line up with the sleeves. And I must have done it wrong because it didn't match up. So I just kept crocheting until they matched. And so it was a little longer than it said, but I still don't think they'll be too long. And part of that may have been because I didn't check my gauge. I never check my gauge. I'm, I think I've checked my gauge like twice in my whole life and I've been knitting for half my life. And now crocheting just for a couple years. But um, I have had some flops because of it. I know you're supposed to, but usually when I want to start a project, I want to start. And I like, I'm not going to waste time. Uh, it's not a waste. I know it's not a waste of time, but I'm not going to spend the time to check gauge. Just So yes, I have had some flops, but I've also had things work out well where it like just coincidentally worked out better because it was not the right gauge, but that's neither here nor there. So that is that. I think that's all I have to say about that. Um, oh, except one other thing for the buttons, I am going to do multicolored buttons. I thought that'd be fun. I got in my stash of buttons, which my great grandma, who's gone now, she gave me she was an excellent seamstress. She gave me all her buttons, so I've got like a ton of fun buttons. So I picked out all different ones. It was funny when I was picking them out, my littlest nephew, Joel, who's two, he was saw me going through them and he was like, oh, like he thought that was the most amazing thing ever. And I was counting them, you know, to see if I had enough. And so he would point at them like he was counting them too and then want to rifle through the drawers. So cute. But sorry, tangent, anti-tangent, sorry. Okay, um, next work in progress. Actually, the only other one I'm going to show you today. Because I want to keep this kind of brief, because I have a short attention span, so I assume everyone else does too. You know, probably you don't. But, um, want to keep this, like, at least half an hour or less. See if I can do it. Keep taking anti-tangents. That's not going to happen. Okay, I am working on this sweater... Land Girl, Debbie Bliss, my favorite pattern collection. But this short sleeve sweater, I've made quite a few of them. I made some plain colored ones. Uh, I made one much like this, just in different colors. Actually, two much like this, just in different colors. And then um, this time I am making a red one. I'm actually all done with the pieces. I've got the front, back, two short sleeves, all done. I just need to join for the, um, oh, that's a feather. How'd that happen? I need to join for the yoke, and I'm going to work little Scotty dogs in the yoke. And I'm making this to go with a pair of um, black and off-white buffalo plaid cigarette trousers that I made from a vintage pattern. You can see that on my Instagram, too. Um, yeah, I'm really excited to do the Scotty Dogs. I just looked up on Pinterest a uh, chart for Scotty Dogs. I found a few options, so I'll work out which one will fit within the space allotted so I think that'll be really cute though. I love Scotty dogs. So um I'm debating whether to use just solid black. Also that is also Knit Picks palette. That is Serrano. And I'm debating whether to use just plain black for the Scotty dogs or I also have a fingering weight black tweed I could use. I thought that might be kind of fun. Give them a little something different so I think that's all I had to say about that um okay I wonder how I'm doing on time I'm going to tell you about my plans that I have 
some of my plans, I should say. I always have like a million planned in my head. So, first plan. Okay, guys, I love Christmas. It's the beginning of November, and I'm dying to decorate for Christmas. When I was a kid, we would always, always, always wait until after the day after Thanksgiving. Not after the day after Thanksgiving. The day after Thanksgiving. That was like as long as we could wait. American Thanksgiving, that is. I already have a few things up. See Santa's money bag. And then this candy garland. Because I'm going to do the candy theme for my decor this year. Because I love all the bright colors. All the pinks and the pretty colors. Um, but I digress. So... When I saw this sweater, I saw it on actually Constance of Yearning Over the Days on her Instagram. She had cast it on. And I am going to do the one with the decoration. Some of the plain one. It's the Yulgren by Andy Sutherland. I hope I said that right. I looked up the word and it means Christmas tree, so I'm thinking Yule, like Yule log. Um, plus, I think it's like Swedish or something. I don't think I have any Swedish in me, so I can't pronounce it. Just mostly German and about 75 other things. Um... Yeah, I'm super excited about this. I'm thinking I'll do green. Maybe a light green like this. At first I was thinking, ooh, pink would be fun with like the ornaments. But then I thought, well, but I want it to be green so that you can really tell it's a Christmas tree. And then I'll bring in the pink and stuff with the decoration. I think I, I have some mini pom-poms I can use on it. That'll be super cute. So, or, like, a pistachio color, like, was in my Kath Kidston colored, um, hoodie. That would be cute, too. If I could find it in the right weight. I don't know if Knit Picks, this takes worsted weight, and I'm not sure if Knit Picks has pistachio in a worsted weight. So, I'm sure I can find some. Or, like, kind of a teal or aqua would be fun, too. Aqua is my very favorite color. So, anytime I can make something aqua, I'm a happy girl. So... Yeah, that, I don't know if that even counts as a plan, because I don't even have the yarn yet. I'm just so excited about that pattern. So, and then, okay. All my plans are about Christmas, because Christmas. This fabric, I'm so excited about. It's Jemima Puddle Duck, and it's Christmas. Two of my very favorite things. I love Beatrix Potter. She's my favorite artist. She's just all around. I don't know. I just love her books, her drawings, their, you know, her paintings. They're just so perfect, so pretty. And she was even a really cool person. I just read a biography about her. That was really interesting. Um, and of course I've seen the movie Miss Potter. It's a movie, so you have to take it with a grain of salt, but for the most part, I think they got it pretty, pretty good. Um, so that, I'm going to make a dress for Christmas time, and I'm thinking sleeves, because it's Christmas fabric, so obviously it doesn't need to be versatile. A lot of times I like to make my dresses sleeveless, so I can either wear a shirt under them where it's cold or a cardigan with it because it's hard to pull a cardigan like over the sleeves um and with tights I love colored tights um but this I feel safe doing sleeves so I'll probably do sleeves maybe just three quarters length because I'm really warm blooded so I get hot um and thinking my sister Amy, my oldest sister, had the idea to do bring out the blue of her bonnet with some piping. So I've never done that before. 
Wait, try that. That would be really cute. So, again, another very vague plan. Mostly I just wanted to show you that fabric. I got it off Etsy. It's probably from the 90s. No, actually 80s. It says right here 1985 Springs Industry. Okay, so there's that. Really excited about that. And then for my last plan, this is another Christmas idea. I got this gorgeous um, Belici candy shop. It's the colorway from Knit Picks. It's just so pretty. So soft. I got it with my last order just for the fun of it. It was on sale. So I was like, oh, I have to have that color. Make some socks for me. And then I thought, how fun would it be to get on there and get all different colors and make a pair for each of my wee little rabbits, my nieces and nephews, for part of their Christmas gift. Because that would be kind of a fun tradition to get a stocking for, or a pair of stockings, socks, for Christmas from Auntie. I think that would be fun and a good memory. I'm starting it a little late. My oldest nephew is now taller than me, but he'll appreciate them nonetheless. So, I mean, I've made them socks previously, some of them, but it'd be fun to do like one for everybody. That would be fun, I thought. So, that is actually all I have for today. Um, so hopefully you could hear me. Hopefully you can see me. Lighting wise, um, and I mumble, so hopefully you could understand me. Um, trying to think, yeah, I guess that's just it. So, hopefully, you enjoyed this. Hopefully, it didn't put you to sleep. Uh, if you've made it this far, good for you. I probably would have pooped out before now, because, like I said, short attention span. Um, any of you who have been doing this for a while, if you're watching, um, if you have any tips or anything, they'd be greatly appreciated. Um, and I'm not sure if or when I'll do another one. See how this goes, I guess. Um, yeah, so hopefully I'll have those things done to show you and maybe started on some other ones and maybe have some new plans to share with you because I've always got plans. So thanks for watching. Um, hopefully see you next time. Bye! Mm -hmm.